Welcome. Shoulder pathologies is a major epidemic, from frozen shoulder to adhesive capsulitis, to bicipital tendonitis, to bursitis, rotator cuff injuries. The list goes on and on and on. It's a very complex joint because there's so much range of motion within that joint. The big problem is that when you have shoulder pain, most people don't like to use the shoulder because it hurts, although it's a catch-22. When you don't use the shoulder, you lose the motion in the shoulder. When you don't use, you lose. The worst thing to do with a shoulder is not move it. Then you start developing scar tissue, adhesions, and it becomes much harder to rehabilitate and get your mobility back. You notice that when you don't use it, you have a hard time maybe bringing your, your hand over your head or, or scratching your back or putting your bra strap on or whatever it may be. It's very important that you understand that the most important thing is mobility. So this particular technique I like to review with you is that very few people pick it up. Why? Because when you hurt the shoulder, guess what? They address all eyes and all tests to the site of what you're hurting or where you're hurting. So I want to bring out a very important joint called the sternoclavicular joint. The sternoclavicular joint is the sternum. There's a manubrium, which is the top part of the sternal area, and the clavicle, which is the bone that comes all the way across to the shoulder. But if you look at this picture right here, that sternoclavicular joint occurs between the proximal end of the clavicle and the clavicular notch of the manubrium of the sternum. And together with a small part of the first costal cartilage, the sternoclavicular joint is a saddle type joint that allows movement of the clavicle predominantly in anterior to posterior as well as vertical up and down. Understand that whenever you move the shoulder, if you move the shoulder backwards, and I want you to do this with me, take your two fingers, I want you to put it on the sternoclavicular joint. You take the clavicle, run it across, you'll feel a little groove in there where it meets the sternum, the center of the chest and put your fingers right on that lump. You'll feel a big bump. That's where the clavicle meets the sternum. Take your, take your other arm, uh, put it like this. I want you just want to bring it back. I bring it forward. I bring it up. Bring it down. You'll notice predominantly when you go up and down, you'll feel that joint move. In other words, when you bring your elbow up, the joint will come down. When you bring your elbow down, that joint comes up. Okay, that's, that's the clavicle. The clavicle will come up. If you bring it back, it should go forward. If you bring it forward, it should go back. So if you notice you just start moving the, the shoulder uh, and the elbow around, you'll feel movement in that proximal part of that clavicle that's meeting the sternum. So the purpose of this video is to realize that if there is lack of mobility, or what we call fixation, and this particular joint is not moving or gliding properly, in the sternoclavicular joint, the clavicle is not moving within the joint, then it's going to cause potential more problems within the shoulder joint. Because every time the shoulder moves, this sternoclavicular joint must move along with it. In a kinetic chain, when one thing is not working, something else has to compensate for it. So what we're gonna do is that if you have a shoulder that's giving you problems and you notice it's not getting well, it's chronic, it continues to uh, just flare up on you all the time, what you're going to do is you're going to contact that sternoclavicular joint. We're going to go what we call medial lateral. Uh, we're going to take the thenar part of our hand. For example, if it's my left shoulder, we're going to use our right hand, the thenar part, which is that fleshy part right here, and we're going to contact right over that joint and we're gonna take the other hand on the elbow and we're just gonna go ahead and push the elbow, push the arm against that joint. We're gonna go inwards and outwards. So we're gonna go this direction. As we push into the joint, we're gonna push medial to lateral. So this is the angle we're gonna be. So basically we're gonna go short little, little movement here like this. Watch here, just three little movements. As we contact it, one, two, three, that's it. The purpose of that is restoring mobility within that joint. There's an eight to one ratio that this joint generally comes forward because of the fact that most of our injuries and problems happen to the front of the shoulder. When the shoulder is pushed backwards, 
as the shoulder goes back, this particular part, the proximal part of the clavicle, comes forward. So this can jam in that position. So by taking the thinner part on that area, you'll feel the, the clavicle stick up right just inside on top of that clavicle. We're going to contact it with the hand. We're going to take our other hand on the elbow. And we're going to push three short little thrusts, one, two, three, onto the area, and that's it. It's very light. You don't have to push hard. Obviously, do not hurt yourself. Do not put a lot of force in there. You're just putting a little movement in the area to allow the body to free up that joint so the shoulder joint can heal quicker. Now, if you had an injury to the shoulder joint, you fell on your arm, and you're having lots of pain in this joint, do not do this technique. This technique should only be done if you're asymptomatic, meaning you're having no symptoms. But the key thing with this joint is to apply movement into it, which will help free up the, the shoulder unit where the glenohumeral joint is, where the humerus goes into the glenoid fossa of the shoulder. If you're having chronic uh, adhesive uh, fixations where you can't move it, chronic bursitis, and you notice it's not getting well, this is something that you want to go ahead and do. You can do it uh, just maybe once a day, not too hard. If it's hurting you, if it's sore, don't do it. Okay, that's the cardinal rule. Anything you do to the body, any exercise, any movement, any uh, range of motion, if something is hurting you when you do it, don't do it. That's your body is telling you not to do it. So this can be a big thriller for you because this joint is commonly overlooked, but this joint works along with the glenohumeral joint, the humerus, where it goes into the acromion region, uh, into the, in the glenoid fossa. So you'll notice, again, if you move moving your shoulder around like this and you notice when you did it, you may not originally be feeling any movement in here, but after you put the little movement into the uh, sternoclavicular joint and then you hold it with the two fingers and then move it around, you're gonna say, wow, I feel movement again. If you feel movement come back, then you don't have to do that technique again. The purpose of this technique is to restore movement in the joint and allow the body the natural ability of the innate wisdom within your system to repair and heal. And the times it can't heal is when you're having a fixation, a kinetic chain, a problem somewhere else that's not allowing that part of the body to repair and heal. I hope this really helps you. Leave your comments below. I'm sure you'll have many. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot of miracles because you're going to see changes. Obviously, this is biomechanics. I get uh, many, many hundreds of emails, people saying, wow, I didn't know that the body can do that. The body is pretty intelligent as long as you let it do what it needs to do on its own. So leave your comments below, subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive more self-help uh, videos, share the video with others so they can be helped and most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.